beep, 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 beep. I thought as soon as I'm doing science alarms hair over the last few days that I'd wear it white because it makes me look even more like Hannibal Lecter. A very slipper of you, Agent Starlink. <laughs> How are we, folks? Become a warrior teacher, buy me a coffee, help me out, for God's sake. Right, just, yeah. Okay, so, <clears throat> I was at the Battle of Ideas, right? Or oh, Barry was. <laughs> right? And I'm sat in this room having a cup of coffee and chatting. I think, I can't remember, I was chatting to Claire Fox or somebody, whoever it was I was gas biking to in this little room. And all of a sudden, this woman walked in the room and filled it. Right, you know what I mean? Not because she's fat, right? But she sort of walked in the room and, you know, oh, this is a very glowy person. This person glows. You know when somebody, you know, somebody's walked in a room? This was this woman. She walked in the room and I knew she was there. Like, oh, a striking, a striking woman of great charisma. Now, and it turned out that it was an MP from uh, Australia called Moira, right? Moira Deeming. Now, I, it was great. I got to say hello to Moira. She, fantastic, right? But she literally walked in. It was like, oh, <laughs> real presence. And we love the idea of real presence. We need leaders um, and politicians with real presence. So today we're in Australia, okay, talking about Moira Deeming. Now, lo and behold, then I see after I said hello to Moira, I think she took a photograph of me. I can't remember because she hadn't put it up. She's like, no, don't bother with that fat git. <laughs> right? She, I'm sure we had a photograph together. Moira, did we have a photograph together? I can't, I think we did, but you haven't put it up. So that's because you've got home and gone, right, yes, put that one up there. You know, there's Douglas Murray. There's a, who's this fat bloke? <laughs> Find my bloody picture, Moira, and put it up. Anyway, so it was great to talk to Moira and sort of chew the fat. But then this article came up on the 10th of November in the Telegraph, followed by something else that I've got me mitts on, right? So this is quite interesting because Moira's written in the Telegraph saying, my state, which is in, you know, wherever, wherever Moira is, banned conversion therapy. It's been a disaster. What a surprise. Children do not have a capacity to consent to loss of fertility, sexual function, or long-term health, written again by Moira. Okay, now, um, here we go. Extreme transgender ideology is testing the political and moral conviction of legislators all over the world. Everyone is familiar with the highly successful campaign the left has run, telling people that not helping children who think they were born in the wrong body to undergo irreversible medical procedures is as bigoted as trying to persuade adolescents they're not gay. You know the line. If you don't accept this premise, you'll be responsible for the misery of vulnerable young people. But that's no excuse to be weak-willed. We, as adults, parents and lawmakers, must take responsibility for protecting children. We must not be passive nor self-serving. When it comes to protecting children, we must be ferocious. To criminalise, in any degree whatsoever, the instinct of loving parents and ethical clinicians to divert gender-distressed young people away from irreversible interventions like puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones and surgeries would be an unforgivable, safeguarding failure. Well, right, you're speaking the language now, Moira. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I have recently learned that the British government is thinking about legislating on this issue. I understand it. As I understand it, the Conservatives are tempted by the idea of being able to take credit before Labour comes to power for a politically savvy conversion therapy ban that will appease all sides and reduce the likelihood of children being medically transitioned. As a politician in the Australian state of Victoria, allow me to enlighten you. It cannot be done. Catch that? It cannot be done. We passed a conversion therapy ban in 2021, much to my dismay, and that has made it a criminal offence for parents and clinicians to do anything other than affirm the self-diagnosis of gender-confused children. Recommending of cor a course of therapy or just asking them to pause and reflect is an attempt to convert them. You can bet your bottom dollar that any attempt to protect these vulnerable young people banning conversion therapy for the LGBs, but not the Ts, would be swept away by the powerful LGBT lobby as the bill makes its way through Parliament. You will end up in a place we are in in Victoria, where a parent cannot ask a child to consider a decision to have a double mastectomy without risking prosecution. If the Conservative government really wants to do something to protect vulnerable adolescents, it should do what I wish we'd done, and making it law, making pass a law, making it a criminal offence to help anyone under the eighteen, under under the age of eighteen, to transition. 
Children do not have the capacity to consent to loss of fertility, sexual function or long-term health. We shouldn't allow these things to be done to any children, not gay children, not autistic children, and certainly not children who are confused about their gender. Imagine how such a law would shift the debate. Instead of making self-serving non-statements like we care about all people no matter their sexual orientation or gender identity, the activists pushing or for social transitioning, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones and surgeries for minors would be the ones having to defend the case. Oh, Moira, you beauty. Hallelujah, you beauty. It's brilliant. Yep, let's make him defend the case. National health authorities, private medical institutes and clinician insurance providers all over the world are beginning to reconsider support for these interventions. Let's not make life easier for those pushing them, as the state of Victoria has done. I hope this government will not even consider putting forward any version, no matter how many how watered down, of a conversion therapy ban. Make no mistake, mistake, it will end up harming some of our most vulnerable children. Moira Deeming is an independent member of the Victoria Legislative Council. I could not agree more, Moira. I could not agree more. It's absolutely brilliant, right? Absolutely brilliant. Then I was sent this, right, which ties in, really, with what Moira is saying. Um, and this is from the 30th of August, and it's from the Victorian government, right? I, I just, I read it and I was, I'm not, I gobs, gobsmacked. It was a written response to something. The problem is I can't find what there was a written response to. Though it strikes me it's a question about, look up a cute nuttery, right? Listen to this. The Victorian government strongly affirms the position of inclusion. We are working every day to progress equality for LGBTQ plus Victorians and to create more inclusive communities and spaces. Discrimination towards any section of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and gender gender diverse, intersex and queer communities based on who they are is simply not acceptable. I mean, that's just insane, isn't it? I'll say it again. Discrimination towards any section of a lesbian, gay, bisexual, you could have stopped there, trans and diverse, gender diverse, intersex and queer communities based on who they are is simply not appropriate. Every member of the LGBTQ plus community deserves to feel safe, supported and celebrated in all settings. Safe, supported and celebrated? I'm, I'm queer. Why? Well, I've got blue hair and a ring piece. Uh, ring piece? <laughs> I've got blue hair and a nose ring. Celebrate good times, come on! And everybody has to party. Oh, get stuffed! This is a, this is a real. This is the response from a from from a real person. I, I just it's insane, right? It gets worse. Different parts of our of our communities face different and interesting cha- intersecting challenges. Here they go with their intersectionality, including transphobia, biphobia, as well as racism, sexism, and misogyny. Right. That is why through this that is why through the Victorian government's 10-year plan for driving equality across our state it's not equality it's equity pride in our future we will continue to work with rainbow communities crying out loud to ensure all Victorians feel safe are healthy have equal human rights and can live wholly and freely really wholly and freely what's included in the plus come on the government is committed to ensuring that all rainbow communities, rainbow communities, you need to go off, right? Rainbow communities feel welcomed and included at Victoria's suite of a look at the plus festivities and fe- festivals and events running throughout the year. This includes when we celebrate Lesbian, Lesbian Day of Visibility. <laughs> Imagine being the, the lesbian they chose. Right, the, there she is! Lesbian Day of Visibility. I'm over here! <laughs> ah, it's just so it's. <laughs> Lesbian day of invisibility. Why can't we have a trans day of invisibility? I haven't seen one of those girls all day. <laughs> have you seen one? No. <laughs> this includes when we celebrate <laughs> Lesbian Day of Visibility on the 8th of October. Lesbians and all queer women, both cis and trans. <laughs> so you mean men? Right, men and women. <laughs> Ah, male and female lesbians. They are literally... This is Australia. You know, I... It's just... Moira, I... Australia to me is like... I don't know why. It's the stereotype of the men are quite, you know... Manly men. Either that or the Priscilla Queen of the Desert. Is that we... Is that we... Neighbours of Priscilla. 
Really? Right, okay. Oh. It says here, right, this includes when we celebrate Lesbian Day of Visibility on the 8th of October. Lesbians and all queer women, both cis and trans, deserve to be celebrated and feel safe. But this should not be at the expense of others' dignity and identities. It's just God. <laughs> it's all it's automatically at the expense. You've eradicated sexuality and sex, you unbelievably stupid woman called Harriet Shing, right? MP. I bet there's a Harriet Kaching going on somewhere. Somebody's paying her money to write this kind of cobblers. Legal reforms on anti vilification. Well, some people need vilifying. Hell's wrong with you, you stupid people. Legal reforms on anti vilification are being coordinated by the Attorney General. However, this, their perspectives, hey, wait for it, lived experience and the expertise of the Justice work Working Group. And look up at the Q plus task force. Within my portfolio are already playing a really important role with the development of a legislative response that deter, deters, prevents and responds to the impact of vilification of look up at Q plus people and communities across the state. The Honourable Harriet Shing. Right. All right, Harriet, how you doing, Harriet? You nutter. <laughs> so we've got a great article by Morris that don't go down that route. Don't do it. Don't, and then we've got the reality of Victoria from the Honourable Harriet Shing, who is obviously as mad as a box of frogs, right? So to the people of Victoria, where um, Moira is, get voting right. <laughs> get rid of Harriet Shingles, whatever her name is, right? Harriet Shing. She's obviously insane. <laughs> That'll do for today. All right, Moira? Keep going, girl. Keep going. We'll get them. Especially her. <laughs> there should be a law that says you have to vilify Harriet Shing. Today is vilify Harriet Shing day. Harriet, you twat. <laughs> it's just insane. Go well. I'll see you later. Become a warrior teacher. Ta-da.